good to see so many people uh, in service this morning. Uh, this is the time in our service for announcements. Are there any announcements this morning? Okay. Uh, the farm report. Uh, been thinking a lot about Thanksgiving and uh, the uh, and how it affects each of our lives. Um, the corn and soybeans that. Uh, the farmers produce in Illinois uh, goes a long ways around the world, and uh, the, the uh, yield was excellent on both corn and soybeans this year. Uh, we're already um, uh, seeing the, uh, the inputs uh, that we have to uh, buy ahead of time uh, increase. But one of the things that, that we have is that uh, the demand for protein is very important. And so um, uh, that's why the prices are uh, increased right now. Um, so think about the freedom that we have here in our country compared to some of the other countries choose to worship as we like, and uh, that's uh, one of the important things. Other announcements? Jenny Hubbard, our pastor. That sounds wonderful, yes. <laughs> Welcome everyone. We are so excited today for the baptism of Elena May Graham. Looking beautiful as ever. And welcome to all the family and friends who have joined us today for this very, very special occasion. And we also have a guest speaker, Greg Wittak. Did I say it right? There you are. So looking forward to hearing from you later on in the service from the Kendall County Food Pantry. Let us be called to worship. A new world is being formed. Let us pray for and participate in God's coming kingdom. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we are blessed to be together on this wonderful occasion of worship and baptism and fellowship and children's play practice. Be with us today and always. Make sure our hearts are centered on you. Amen. So for our children's sermon today, we have a baptism. So let's get right to it. I'd like to invite Emily and Jim and Elena and Jessica and Steve forward. And I would also like to invite all the kids to come up and sit here so you get the best seat possible. So you can sit on the front pew or you can sit on the floor. Can you see that way? You might want to you might want to sit on the floor and face so you can see us all up here. How about that? Perfect. Wonderful to see you all. Hello. Hear the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. And teach them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And here's my favorite line from Jesus of all time. Jesus says, and remember this, I am with you always until the end of age. In baptism, God claims us and seals us to show that we belong to God. God frees us from sin and death, uniting us with Jesus Christ. By water and the Holy Spirit, we are made members of the church, the body of Christ. 
and join to Christ's ministry of love, peace, and justice. Let us remember with joy the celebration of our own baptisms. Jim and Emily, do you desire Elena to be baptized? Relying on God's grace, do you promise to live the Christian faith and to teach that faith to your child? Jessica and Steve, do you promise through prayer and example to support and encourage Elena as a faithful Christian? I'd like to invite our elder of Christian education, Lynette, up On behalf of the session, I present Elena May Graham, son of Jim and Emily Graham, to receive the sacrament of baptism. Congregation, do you, as members of the Church of Jesus Christ, promise to guide and nurture Elena by word and deed, with, with love and prayer, encouraging her to know and follow Christ and to be faithful members of his church? If so, answer, we do. <laughs> Through baptism, we enter the covenant God has established. Within this covenant, God gives us new life, guards us from evil, and nurtures us in love. In embracing that covenant, we choose whom we serve by turning from evil and turning to Jesus Christ. Jim and Emily, as God embraces you within this covenant, I ask you to reject sin, to profess your faith in Jesus Christ, and to confess the faith of the church, the faith in which we baptize. Trusting in the gracious, gracious mercy of God, do you turn away from sin and renounce evil and its power in the world? Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Lord and Savior, trusting in grace and love? Will you be Christ's faithful disciple, obeying his word and showing his love? <laughs> With the whole church, let us confess our faith by reciting the Apostles' Creed. Amen.
confession. God promises forgiveness through Jesus Christ in humility and faith. Let us approach this prayer together in honest confession. Eternal God, too often we settle for the way things are. We embrace what is comfortable and disengage from the work of necessary change. We fail to hope for a new day and a new world because our present reality feels good enough. Forgive us, have mercy on us. Fill us with the passion to live and work towards a world made just and equitable and new. Amen. From Matthew chapter 9, verse 2, when Jesus saw their faith, he said, Take heart. Your sins are forgiven.
comes from the book of Revelation. Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come. And from the seven spirits who are before his throne. And from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood. And made us to be a kingdom, priests serving his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look. He is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierce him. And on his account, all the tribes of the earth will wail. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This time I'd like to welcome Greg Wittek from Kendall County Food Pantry. We don't really know. We haven't figured out a way yet to, 
and to do that. So pray about uh, COVID getting to the point where we can be more responsive to individual families and large, small, more boys than girls, more this than that. It's uh, it's part of one of the things that challenges us. So since I was here last, we've opened up a satellite pantry. We had one in Plano at the time. We moved to a, to a church inside Plano. That was Friday night, and I believe there was 85 families, which is up. Oswego is a fairly large satellite operation, and then and just in terms of raw numbers, we continue to step up. Real quick story, back in late 2020, or about uh, mid early 2021, all of the numbers in all the pantries across Illinois started to drop. Like ours would go down from 300 families, 250, we went down to 140, and nobody could figure out why. Well, somebody that runs a pretty a large pantry in Elgin went out and kind of surveyed people, and it was because of the SNAP kid program, $300 per child, that the federal government was doling out, that nobody ever, I, I didn't hear about it before it happened, and that's ended. So we're now seeing it go from 140 to 160 to 180 to 212, to 220 to 240, and will be by summertime, or the midst, excuse me, by wintertime, when it gets cold, we will be back up in that 300 number, as families don't have the opportunity to go grocery store with the food with the funds from the Fed. Behind the scenes, uh, we try and craft a message to our clients, our neighbors, you know, that there's hope, that there's care, and ultimately it's it's our way of uh, passing on love to these people who, like I said, reach us at kind of a low part a lot of times in their life. All you have to do to be uh, served by the food pantry is come in, and we call it self-attesting, where you just say, I have need, and that's it. We're about to uh, pull back the restrictions of geography, so we'll serve anybody regardless of where you live. There's a really neat program going on that starts at the federal level that's pushed now through the NIFB, the Northern Illinois Food Bank, which is like our distribution source uh, in the hierarchy that will step above us. And they want to really push hard not to um, have this mentality of scarcity. So there's this there's this weird undertone that I have seen at our place where we, we want to hold on to things, you know, in case we're going to need them, or, or, or build the storehouse up. And right, we're taught to do exactly the opposite. We need to care for people, and so we're kicking down the doors of geographic boundaries, and we're going to serve anybody that comes home. You have to tell us who they are and say, I have need. Tell us a little bit about the count of people in their family. But it's all, all the things we do is meant to reduce the friction and reduce the the trauma and reduce the need in people's lives. It is not always easy work. For those of you who have ever been a part of it, um, some of our clients, as like I said, they arrive at what might, might be a very challenging part of their life, and they can be a bit hard to love. It's the easiest way I can say that. But uh, that's the main mission, is uh, for a lot of us, is to meet them where they are, whatever part of life they're at, and just build them up, whether it's just by being the kindest person they run into that day. Um, that's what we try and we try and do. Um, too far here. Um, since I'm called the sermon, I'm going to let loose. Uh, let loose some side notes I have here in terms of how we try and meet these people. In, in Ephesians six, Paul is teaching about the various roles that we have in life and. When things get tough at the pantry, me personally, and I try and share this with the other people around me, um, I try to live out verses 7 and 8 in Ephesians 6, where it says, work with enthusiasm as though you, as low, as though you were working for the Lord rather than for people. Remember that the Lord will reward each one of us for the good that we do, whether we're slaves or free. Right? So you want to like, try and remember why I'm, I'm doing what I'm doing. And I did not mean for this to be Bible teaching, but uh, I've got a little extra time, and I want to share a bit about why we do, in addition to what we do, the numbers and the food and the comments and things like that. In Matthew 25, starting in verse 31, that's the, the uh, teaching about the uh, about judgment. Down in verse 40, so we'll get, don't read the whole thing, I'll let you do that, but down in verse 40, it closes off, where it says, and the king will answer and say to them, truly I say to you, to the extent that you did it for the least of these, of my brothers and sisters, of mine, you did it for me. And so it's really just about 
looking around and paying attention and see who comes into our purview that has need and meeting it, rather than judging it or saying, oh look, in their trunk is the stuff they got from the pantry in Aurora when they came out to us, which way happens. Or, look, they're driving a $80,000 Cadillac and we're loading their trunk. I mean, we, I've heard them all. In five and a half years I've been there, I think I've heard pretty much all of the reasons that we were going to judge the people that show up. And I'm completely guilty of it myself sometimes. But you have to fight through that and care for people when they say they have. So that's the common mission at Pantry. Follow God's call on us, uh, treating our neighbors as ourselves, uh, imitating Christ, finding Christ in others, and getting a few hundred dollars in groceries at the end of it all. Getting a few hundred dollars in groceries into our neighbors' houses uh, each month when they live in need. I'm sure you've heard this before. Um, this is our stock terminology at the pantry, is that we're exceptionally effective with funds because of the generosity of the neighbors, because of the way the programs are set up at the Fed and the federal and state. We deliver about $8 worth of uh, uh, more than eight dollars for every dollar that's donated winds up so that so that a hundred dollar gift really does wind up being about eight hundred dollars of groceries and supplies on average in our in our in our clients and our neighbors' trunks. So it's it's really effective. The food rescue program that we have, we have a truck and generous volunteers. They go out and collect um, nearly dated food from the local grocery stores all around Kendall County. Bring that back six days a week, and all gets culled through and sorted. And uh, the the, uh, the the stuff that really isn't meant for presentation goes to farmers. And, you know, we try and hold on to as much of the food as we can without dumpstering. That's the for us in our in the food pantry world, dumpstering food is uh, is the last thing we want to do. So uh, we, when we're buying things through the NIFB or in other places, we can buy certain items that might be. Three dollars and forty-nine cents in a, in a jewel or a Meyer, and you're paying twelve cents for it. So between all the things we did, collecting it for free, paying discount prices, and other things, buying it one. Then, <coughs> sorry, excuse me, the federal EFP emergency uh, food program distributes all these giant overstocks. Dark Craft, you know, might have eighteen train car loads of X Y Z food that starts at the federal government. Is distributed to the individual food banks and winds up with us at some point where we'll have eight skids or eight, you know, eight pallets of some food item that all comes to us for free. We have an amazing clothing department with all, and right now it's at an all time high. Um, if you meet somebody who has a need or you have the ability to broker a need where you find somebody and they don't, through pride or distance or logistics and they can't get to the pantry, give us a call, contact us, and we'll get our coats and clothes. The real prize is children's underwear, all crazy things. When you're really tight on money, um, that is just a, a huge prize. And so we have all of that. It's all ready to go. Uh, we do purchase items at retail every once in a while when we have to. Diapers, Tylenol, women's products. That, that takes us kind of back to the idea. Those are not have to have, you know what I mean? That, that's not staple items for food, but it's trying to care for people when they have this acute need. And when your child is sick and you don't have the money, children's Tylenol and diapers can be the difference between uh, making it or breaking it that day. So um, we have about 100 volunteers on the list that get the newsletter each week, and about 30 of them that are very active, uh, all at zero pay. They're all truly volunteers. But our, as a group, we work six days a week kind of aiming all of our efforts towards Thursday food distribution day when, like I said, we're going to get So that's, uh, you know, at the end of this, if you have any questions, don't leave me hanging. I'm happy to. How many times have you gotten to ask a question after a sermon? <laughs> Today's the day. So if I get to the end and I haven't covered something, please uh, don't leave me hanging and ask, ask it. Um, we would love to have you up. I always like to close this off with a little pitch. It says, we'd love to have your help if you feel called to. We are short of help in the office where Karen works. And, uh, and uh, also short in the, on the truck. And so the first one of those needs is all about people and finances and paperwork. And the second piece of that is all about having a strong back. A very different job. We have, uh, we have a need in both spots. If you or someone has some time to give, reach out, ask us about it. We'd love to share the blessing of loving on these, on these clients and these neighbors in our, in our communities while they're struggling.
Portland, and then one closing Porsche, just generally, as long as you've given me the microphone. No matter what skill or asset or gift or talent that you have, and we all have them, he gave all of us, I know we all have, we all have bad skills in some area of, uh, in our lives. Don't hide it under a rock, don't stick it under a basket, and God is pretty clear about how he feels about hiding the gifts that he's given us. So that's my little poke. Um, go out and put the blessings you work for Christ Brothers in the pantry or here. What a great, I mean, your ratio of kids to adults is just shocking. It was just great to see that many kids in the service. So I really appreciate your time and your attention, and I am very happy to answer any questions that you have. And Karen, if I miss something, yell out. How close are we getting back to being able to, like, on Saturday, come in and, and have a work day like we just did? Yeah, so, so we used to use uh, groups in the community all the time for work and fixing things up around the plant and yard work. And, and uh, with, with COVID, we've really narrowed it down to just our base people and wearing masks and all the safety protocols. So to directly answer the question, how close are we? I just don't know. I mean, we really feel... You may or may not like the governor's mandates and his structure and the rules that get made for it, but we feel real strongly about following them. Whether we're, you know, whether we agree or not, we try to follow them. So, I mean, it's really going to be driven somewhat by the reality of the medical situation on the ground, but also by when the governor or the, 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 the government or the people who make the rules pull that out. And that, for us, that's not only the governor, but Kevin County uh, Health Department. So we'll kind of follow the health department's guidance um, in doing that. Yeah? I have a question, just a comment about the, during COVID, the generosity from the community was, it, it would make me cry every Thursday. It, it literally would. We had a person who walked in with a stack this high of $20 gift cards for a wonder man. So please give this out to your clients. We had people uh, probably every hour on the hour on a Thursday coming in with either cash or checks, and I just want to try to do my part to help because I know people are struggling so much. We have little girls coming in, uh, so proud with their um, birthday kits. So they would get a 9 by 13 foil can, lots of cake mix, the can of frosting, birthday candles, plates, birthday napkins. Put you know saran wrap around it all and tie a bow on top and say please give this out to people who are coming through who have a child with a birthday and it was just over and over and over again. Um, this kind of county is just an amazing it has place been to amazing. live. And I'm generous. Generous. The people that had the people that were not in need and had extra were super generous the last year. We're coming up on two years. I don't even want to think about that. Anything else? Well, thank you all. Hey, don't take this as a snub, but I'm going to race out of here. We have another event. This is the annual meat raffle over in Bristol. And all the proceeds go to the food pantry, so I have to go make an appearance there. And get it out. You've been very kind to have me up here. I appreciate it. That's all.
Mendel County Food Pantry, so it was very nice to have Greg here today. Jesus says, you will be enriched in every way for your great generosity, which will produce thanksgiving to God. Let us present our offerings to the Lord. Please stand for our doxology. Friday due to overwhelming pain 
they went back into surgery. She had a bleed. They corrected it, so she's feeling much better, much better. Anything else? Prayers of thanksgiving for all of you, for sure. All right, let us pray. God, maker and provider of all, you have blessed us with many gifts. Use us in what we have gathered to feed the world through your love, through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior, our Lord, we pray. Pray, God, in you is more love than we can imagine and more grace than we can ever fathom. You have shown yourself in Jesus Christ as a God who meets us where we are and loves us as we are. We are glad for this day and grateful for your many gifts. You bring good things into our lives more than we can name, more than we can number. You give us the bread of life, sustaining our souls and feeding our deepest hungers. You accompany us on our way. Thank you for your abundant faithfulness. Our hearts are full of many things today, but you are always among us. The journey through these days are marked with all different types of emotion. We are overwhelmed by the needs around us and within us. Some need healing, some need encouragement, some need comfort, some need assurance. We all need hope. So we turn to you asking you to hear our prayers and grant what we need for the living these days of these days. Dear Lord, we lift up many to you today. Many voices have been heard raising up their loved ones with prayers to you. We also lift up those on our hearts, the prayers that we have not shared or said, that stay in our hearts and our minds. We lift them to you now. Lord, we lift up Laura May, who had to go into surgery again on her we thank you that she is on the road to healing once again, and we pray that you be with her to encourage her and to keep her strong, to be with her and her husband, Dick. Dear Lord, we lift up Karen, her brother David, and Rick, and all of the family who said goodbye to Sharon. A long goodbye. Losing pieces of her mother by day, moment by moment, months by months. We thank you for the tender moments that they have shared, and we thank you for the life that she lived and the daughter that she raised that we love so much. We pray that in the coming days that you be with them in their grief. We pray also for the Carpus family who lost their father suddenly. Be with them in their grief. Hold them, encourage them. May they feel your presence in these coming days of saying goodbye. We pray for Finn, maybe Finn without ceasing. For the little life that he is and a little life that means so much to so many. Hold him close, hold him in the palm of your hand. You are the great healer, and we ask for your presence in his surgery. We continue to ask for presence in Chandler's life as she continues to heal on the road to recovery. We are thankful for news of improvement, for news that she is doing better well. Be with her family and her doctors and nurses in continued care for her in hopes that she can live and thrive and be healthy and move forward. We pray with thanksgiving.
beginning for a life of being called to service of your church. Thank you for today's meeting. Thank you for this congregation who has called me to serve among them. Thank you for a presbytery who has also asked me to serve. For the many hearts and minds and souls that travel together, we are so very thankful, humbled, blessed, and loved. And we lift up Elena May in her baptism today. We thank you for all that she is to so many in her family and friends who are here today and love her so. And we thank you for the reminder of her grandfather, Pastor Patrick, who is with us too. I know he would be so proud of this day watching her baptism. Lord, we also ask for your mercies and grace on the Hubbard family as we pray for them in the coming days as they say goodbye to Aunt Jan. Refresh us in the values of your heart. Refresh us in the values of your justice, righteousness, compassion, mercy, and peace. Help us to find a unity of purpose as citizens and neighbors and a family of faith. We pray for your church in places near and far. May the waters of your grace continually refresh and empower us to extend the love of Jesus to all people. We pray for our congregation and our life together and for our efforts to follow in the way of Jesus. Hear us, hold us, heal us, help us. For the sake of our Savior, our Lord, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come.
blessing, I want to remind you all that we have fellowship hour today, so please come join us for that. Cake, there's going to be cake there, and then hanging of the greens will follow, so please stay in help. May we leave this house of worship redeemed and renewed by our time spent in the presence of God. May we leave this house of worship full of hope in our Savior, Jesus Christ. So may the grace, hope, peace, and love of God, the Redeemer, Creator, Sustainer, be with us now and always. Amen. Amen.